This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Today I'm standing on a hill just above the probable ruins of Noah's Ark. Have you enjoyed this wonderful series? My team and I really worked hard to get to this part of the world because we wanted to bring all of these sites and all of this teaching to you. And today I'm concluding my series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And today I want us to see something strange, which Jesus prophesied in Luke chapter 21, beginning in verse 10, where Jesus is describing signs we'll see at the end of the age. And in Luke 21, 10, Jesus said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Well, we all know that. Then in verse 11, great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilence. Well, we know that. But then Jesus added two more statements, which really are a mystery. Jesus said, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. That phrase, fearful sights, is from a Greek word which describes monsters. And in fact, that is the only way you can translate that word. The translators didn't know what to do with it, so they translated it fearful sights. But the Greek literally means there will be monsters. But wait, Jesus also said great signs shall there be from heaven. The word from is the Greek word apo, which means descending right out of the heavens. So Jesus says at the end of the age, we'll see monsters and we will see something coming out of the heavens. What in the world was Jesus talking about? That's what we're going to cover today in the last part of this series. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting in this chair just waiting for this moment to get here so we can study the Bible together. And thank you so much for letting me come into your space. I know that you have lots of things you could be doing today, and the fact that you're with me means so much to me, and I want it to be valuable to you. And today we're going to wrap up the teaching, which is called... Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. It is 15 parts. And I want to say thank you for all your comments, which you've made in social media and many emails, which I've received from you and phone calls, letting me know how much you have appreciated this series. And today is the last day that you can order this series on the program. So please take advantage of this. And it comes with a study guide. And I've told you and told you that I love this study guide. It is enormous. It's nearly the size of a book. I've put so much work into this study guide because I want you to have a feast laid on the table before you. I want you to be able to read it while you're seeing it or hearing it. That's what I do. And it really helps me to reinforce the teaching in my heart and in my mind. And please remember, this will be a great gift for you to give to anybody who has a hunger for the Word of God. It will answer so many questions for them, especially if they've been watching TV programs about ancient aliens and what ancient alien theorists have to say, and maybe they've been confused. My friends, the Bible gives us all the answers. You just need to hear what the Bible says. And so this will be a great gift for you to give to somebody else. And we're also offering you right now the book by Dr. Dennis Lindsay. And today is the last days, the last day. So my friend, please order yours. Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim, Ancient Secrets to Prepare You for the Coming Days. You can order all these things by going online right now, or you can just call that number 
somebody in our office is waiting to take your call. And by the way, they don't want to just take an order from you. They want to pray for you, for you. If you reach out to us, you do not get away without being prayed for. And you don't have to order anything to call us. If you just have a prayer need on your heart, call us. We just want to pray for you. That's part of our ministry. In fact, it is one of the most important parts of our ministry. So please reach out to us to order these things or to let us know how to pray for you. But reach for your Bible. And today we're going to wrap up this series. And today we're going to go to the Gospel of Luke and see what Jesus prophesied about two very mysterious things. In fact, they are so mysterious that in the King James Version, it's not correctly translated because the translators did not have a clue what Jesus was talking about. And translators <clears throat> have struggled for years with these two mysterious points, which we find in Luke chapter 21. We're going to see it today. But in yesterday's program, we looked at what Matthew said about the days just before the flood being exactly duplicated before the end of the age and before the coming of the Son of Man. So whatever was happening just in the days directly preceding the flood, Jesus emphatically said it's going to be duplicated. It's going to be replicated just before the coming of the Son of Man. And that's why I've been teaching this series. It hasn't just been to entertain you with new revelation. I want you to understand that what happened before the flood really is going to be duplicated, replicated in the end of the age. And that's the time that we live in. And we need to know what the Bible says so that we're not taken off guard by all of these events. But today we're going to see what Luke had to say. And you'll see that what Luke said or what Luke recorded about the words of Jesus is very similar. But he added something very important in Luke chapter 21. But we're going to begin in Luke chapter 17, verse 26. And Luke wrote these words of Jesus. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of before the coming of the Son of Man. Notice he says, as it was in the days of Noah, which means as we saw from Matthew's gospel, we are told that the conditions of the world at the very end of the age, just before the coming of Jesus, will be just like the conditions of the world in the days preceding the flood. So yesterday, I covered several of these points about what was taking place in the world just before the flood. Let's cover them again today. And we read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, that in the days before the flood, men were multiplying on the face of the earth, or there was a population explosion. And as I told you yesterday, when I was a boy, there were about 3 billion people on the earth. And we thought, oh, it's so many people. How will we ever accommodate 3 billion people? And today, the population explosion is so massive that there is over 8 million people. They've already got their eyes on a billion people. They've already got their eyes on 10 billion people. My friends, just like there was a population explosion before the flood, we're experiencing one today as well. It is amazing. And in Genesis chapter 6, verse 2, we see that in the days before the flood, there was gross sexual perversion. Jesus said that will be duplicated just before the coming of the Son of Man. So let me ask you, are we witnessing gross sexual perversion? perversion? You know the answer to that question is yes. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 2, we find there was a nefarious activity of spiritual beings who began to mate with women and produce giants. We've also seen there is an ancient document which says these nefarious fallen angels also defied the animals and probably the animals as a result gave birth to monsters or we find there was great demonic activity in the days before the flood. And now we see that in the days just before the coming of Jesus, there's going to be a lot of strange spiritual activity and demonic activity. And my friends, we're witnessing that. Then in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, we find transhumanism. You say, really? Absolutely. When we read in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 4, that the sons of God... Those were the angels that were mutinous and rebelled against God, left their assigned places. They lusted after women in the earth, descended from the spirit realm into this realm, and they began to cohabitate with women. The women became pregnant and gave birth to great giants who ate each other, ate other people, drank blood. That's why the earth was filled with violence through them. 
And my friends, these were horrible, horrible creatures. In fact, we don't really even know how to define what they were. The Greeks called them demigods. They were half God. They were half people. They weren't really gods. They were fallen angels. But the people at that time thought they were gods because it looked like angelic creatures had come down out of the heavens. And as a result of their inner breeding, they produced half creatures. It's like transhumanism. Well, we're living in a day today where you can be transgender. You shouldn't, but you can. Transhumanism is taking place where people are interfacing with computers and computer chips, and we're not even sure what the end result of all this is going to be. It is pretty scary. That's the kind of stuff that was happening before the flood. And Jesus says it will be replicated exactly in the days just before the coming of the Son of Man. Then in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, we read there was continuous evil in the heart of man. And my friends, we are witnessing that now at the end of the age. And then in Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, it says there was widespread corruption and violence. And you know, my friend, that today again, we're living in the midst of widespread corruption and violence. And I would urge you to read what the Apostle Paul said about society at the end of the age in 2 Timothy chapter 3, where he described so many horrific things that are going to happen in society. And I've written a book about it called Last Day's Survival Guide. You ought to order that book because it will equip you to live in this age. You see, God is never in the business of scaring us, but he is in the business of preparing us. And the scriptures prepare us for this time. But if you're ignorant of what the scripture says, then you'll be taken off guard. That's why I want you to get my book, called Last Day's Survival Guide. It will prepare you for where we are and for what we're going to face, and it will equip you for these times. But in Luke 17, verse 27, Luke tells us that Jesus continued to say that in the days before the flood, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It's nearly verbatim what is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, but let's look at it. It says they did eat. The word eat is a continuous form, which means they were eating and eating and devouring and consuming, and it infers overeating and gluttony and shows a lack of moderation. Well, let me ask you, do we live in a day of gluttony? Do we live in a day of overeating? Do we live in a day when people in regard to food are greatly immoderate? That's what was taking place in the days before the flood. And Jesus says it's going to happen again just before the coming of the Son of Man. So is that happening? It also says they drank. The word drank, a form of the Greek word pino, but here it is continuous, which means drinking and drinking. It infers drinking and parting, the use of alcohol, and again shows a lack of moderation. And as I told you in yesterday's program, when I was a boy and when you were young, you couldn't even be served alcohol in a restaurant. You had to go to a bar to be served alcohol, but today alcohol is everywhere and people are freely drinking and we're living in the day of all kinds of addictions when people have a lack of moderation. My friends, that occurred before the flood and Jesus said it would occur again just before the coming of the Son of Man. Then it says they were given in, they married wives. Married wives in Greek is continuous. They were marrying and marrying and marrying. And then it says we're given in marriage. And the Greek word here also is continuous to give and to give in marriage and infers casual remarriage. Well, sometimes failure happens to marriage and there's nothing you can do about it. But this is describing a day when people just trade spouses. It refers to casual remarriage and shows a great lack of sanctity when it comes to marriage. People just bailing out for any cause, finding a new spouse. And again, I'm not being condemning of anybody that's been through a hard time in a past marriage because Jesus understands what you've been through. But we live in a day when people have a very casual idea about marriage and remarriage. And Jesus said that was occurring in the days before the flood and it would occur again, a duplicate moment in the days just before for the coming of the Son of Man. And Jesus says, all of this was going on until, the word until, the Greek word, akri, which means right up until, picturing up to the final moment that the Noah entered into the ark and the flood came. Wow. The word flood, the Greek word cataclysmos, where we get the word cataclysm. This was a cataclysmic moment. And here's the deal. It didn't have to take them by surprise. 
because Noah had been preaching. If they had been willing to hear him and to take him serious, they could have repented. They could have been on the ark with him, but they rejected the word of the Lord. And likewise today, it seems the world at the end of the age is turning a deaf ear to the warnings that are being issued. Jesus said that was happening before the flood. It would happen again until finally Noah entered into the ark. And as I told you yesterday, that word ark is the same word that Moses used when he wrote Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, that his mother made a little ark of bulrushes, covered it with pitch or with slime and put him in it. It was shaped like a little ship. And when she released it into the currents, she was trusting that those currents would carry her little baby into safety and deliverance right into the will of God. Now, that was the story of Moses. Well, Moses was recording this story in the uh, book of Genesis about Noah when he used the same word ark, the very same word. Moses knew that was the use of the same word. And he knew that in the same way that his mother put him in an ark, the currents carried him into safety and into preservation. He used the same word to describe when Noah made an ark. He entered into the ark trusting that God and those currents would carry him safely to a place of deliverance. And that's exactly what took place. And my friends, when you are in Christ, when you're placed in Christ and God closes the door, you're permanently sealed in him. And it is the guarantee that it doesn't matter what goes on around you, the currents are going to carry you to a place of preservation and deliverance. Say amen. Anyway, and the Bible says the flood came and destroyed them all. The word destroyed here is the word apoleo. It's a compound of two words. The word apo, which means really away from the word lua, which means to loose. But when you compound the two words together, it means to take apart, to undo, to unloose. It pictures the place of Un, the picture of undoing something, completely destroying it or completely liquidating it. They were all liquidated. And notice the Bible says all. The Greek word pentas, which is all encompassing, which means except for the eight that were on the ark, no one else survived the flood. That's interesting because Adolf Hitler in World War II believed there were survivors of the flood and he was searching for them. He called them the Aryan race. He didn't know the Bible because the Bible said clearly, except for the eight that were on the ark, there were no other survivors of the flood. That is how cataclysmic the flood was. But then we come to Luke 21, verse 11. Okay, are you ready? Here are the two mysterious things Jesus said, which were difficult to understand until now. They're still a little mysterious, but at least we might have an idea of what they mean. Look at it with me. Luke 21, verse 11, Jesus added that just in the days before the end of the age, there would be great earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilences. All right, we already know all of that. But notice the next things. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. What in the world is Jesus talking about? Well, let's look at the phrase fearful sights. In Greek, it is the word phobotron, which is a derivative of the word phobos, which is the word for fear. But when the word phobos becomes this word phobotron, it is a very, very, very specific Greek word, which is rarely used. In fact, it's the only time it's ever used in the New Testament. It describes monstrous events, scary events, however... It was used by ancient New Testament writers who wrote in Greek to describe how the ancient Greeks described monsters. So you could actually translate it, and there shall be monsters. Even more interesting, it was used in ancient literature to describe the monstrous birth of the giants. Well, of course, those things were taking place just before the flood. Creatures that were being produced, transhumanism, real monsters. And Jesus here in this verse, it seems mysterious, but he says in the very end of the age, you'll know it's the end of the age because there will be monsters all over the place. Now, I don't want to be offensive to anybody because our job is not to be offensive. But my friend, if you look in the world around us today, we are surrounded by monsters, people changing their gender. You can't tell what they are. My friends, we're living in the day of monstrous events. And Jesus said at the end of the age, there will be the appearance of monsters, phobotron. That is the word that is used here. And then he adds, and great signs shall there be from 
heaven. Well, this is really perplexing because the word from is the preposition apo, which means directly from, descending from heaven. And the form of the word heaven is not uranus, which is the normal word for heaven, but uranu. It means again from heaven. So Jesus now uses two words together, which explicitly describe some kind of signs descending out of the sky into the earth at the end of the age. Now, I don't know what that is. I'll just let you use your imagination or you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what it means. But in this verse, Jesus said at the end of the age, these two things are also going to take place. It's going to be a day of monsters. You'll look around and you'll see monsters all around you in society. And it will be a time when something strange begins to descend from the sky into the atmosphere of the earth. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can pray about it to get your own answer. But my friends, it kind of throws open the door for us to wonder what it is. Wow, I think this is amazing. That's exactly what was happening in the days before the flood. There were creatures descending out of the heavens into the earth and monsters were being created in the days before the flood. And Jesus said, whatever was happening before the flood will be replicated. It will be a duplicate moment just before the coming of Jesus. But Jesus didn't tell us these things to scare us. He told us these things to prepare us. So when you begin to see all these things happen, rather than say, oh, it's so terrible, you can say, oh, it's exactly what Jesus told us about. We can handle this because Jesus told us and he prepared us in advance. He chose us for this age and we're anointed for it. Amen. I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. Finally, Rick Renner has unlocked the mystery surrounding the sons of God and the giants that appeared in the earth before the flood during the days of Noah. To film this riveting series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, Rick and his team traveled to eastern Turkey to the ruins of Noah's Ark. In this series, Rick dives deep into the scriptures to give you answers about who are the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1 and 2? What does the promise of 120 years really mean? Where is the real location of Noah's Ark today? Rick says, this is the series I've wanted to teach for decades. With the research we conducted at the real Noah's Ark, along with amazing historical records, I believe this long-awaited series will answer a multitude of questions for people who have wondered about the strange events that occurred before the flood and what Jesus said about them being repeated at the end of the age. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $24. In addition, we're offering Dennis Lindsay's astounding book, Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. This book will amaze you and open your mind to mysteries hidden in the Bible that have great impact on our world today. This book can be yours for $20. Don't delay. Order this bundle of the 15-part series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, and the book, Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing outside the new TV studio in Moscow. Praise God, most of the interior is already finished. They're still working on Denise's studio, so pray for us as we continue, it's gonna be nice. And if you see the big bulldozer behind me, that's because they're getting ready to do the parking lot. You know, winter comes pretty early in our part of the world, so we need to really seize the moment and get this parking done before the cold weather sets in. But hey, we're making progress and praise God, the studio is paid for. This is all paid for. And I wanna say thank you for being the most amazing partners and helping us with this. And now the project in front of us is to pay off the Tulsa facility. We want to retire the debt on the big office complex in Tulsa because when that's paid off, suddenly all those finances are gonna be released for us to go on more TV and minister to people all over the world. My friends, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. I know that's my assignment, to feed as many people the Word of God as possible, and I'm doing it with you. Wow, thank you for being a partner. You're part of the giving team, 
that's helping us make amazing progress. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about joining us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. It's not about buildings. It's just about having the space we need so that we can effectively minister to people. We want to retire that debt so we can take the Word of God to more parts of the world where people are crying out for teaching they can trust. And I want to say thank you for everything you do. Well, today we have just finished the series called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. Fifteen parts to this series. And I don't know about you, but I have enjoyed every one of these programs. And I want you to have the whole series, which again is 15 parts, called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. According to Jesus, what was taking place in the days preceding the flood are going to be replicated at the end of the age that's our age. So we need to understand all these events and the relevance they have to us today. Please order this 15-part series, which comes with this amazing study guide. And please also order the book by Dr. Dennis Lindsay's. Today is the last day you can order any of these on the program, either the 15-part series or the book, which is called Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. And the subtitle says, Ancient Secrets to Prepare You for the Coming Days. Jesus wants you to be prepared. He's not in the business of scaring you, but he is in the business of preparing you. And today I also mentioned my book, which is called Last Days Survival Guide. You ought to go online and order that too, because that book will really wake you up and it will show you what you need to do to protect yourself and protect your family to sail through the waters of the end times victoriously, and you can say amen. But hey, you can order all these things by going online or calling us right now. And please, when you call or write, let us know how to pray for you. We believe in prayer and God will move when we pray together with you. But lay your hand on your heart and I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have instructed us about what's going to happen at the end of the age so we would be prepared and Lord, if you chose us for this age, you've anointed us and we can do it. And we declare that in Jesus name. Amen. I'll see you in the next program. But please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.